Welcome to the Revere Veterans Community Show, sponsored by the Revere Veterans Service and the Revere Allied Veterans Council. Today we have a real special guest all the way from New Hampshire. He's the founder of Honor Flights. His name is Joe Byron, and I'd like to introduce to Joe Byron. Thank Welcome so and much. thank you. Thank you, Morris. Okay, Joe, could you tell how you got involved with the Honor Flights? Sure. Well, Honor Flight New England is uh, an organization, nonprofit organization that transports World War II veterans down to the World War II Memorial at no cost to them. And I'm a retired police officer. How many years, if I may ask? 23 years. God bless you. And I went from there to, to the sheriff's office, and I went to the attorney general's office as an investigator. But when I was investigating, I investigated crimes against our senior population. And um, I walked at the mall in order to build a rapport with our seniors because we know that about 84% don't report crimes. And I met this incredible World War II POW that told me his story, which inspired me to do more. So he allowed us to use his artifacts. We made a DVD for him, and um, my daughter sang in the background. And in 2009, I got off a plane in Baltimore and, and saw a group of World War II vets, and I inquired to see what it was. And, since then, we've had 25 flights and transported 726 veterans. Right. While you're here with us about the honor flight, Joe, we've got three lovely people here. Eileen Marillo, who's a World War II veteran like Hi myself. Hi. Nick Jacoby, who's a Korea veteran. And Bruce Dobson, who's a Vietnam veteran. So, Eileen, you're the first lady here. Tell them a little about yourself. All right. I, uh, a resident of Revere, of course. I taught in the Revere school system for 25 years. And then I went into the Army at Walter Reed as a physical therapist, which was the amputation center for the Army. And then uh, after that, I volunteered in the school system again. And then I uh, helped out at the memorial service that they had. And an idea came to me that the women veterans would never, never be remembered. So I thought, mm, ma. Maybe we can start something that the women have a, mem a memorial for them, and they'll be remembered. So I went to the uh, veterans agent, Nick Boa. I went to the mayor, and they were all in favor of it. So since then, I've been scooting up names. I have 146 names. God bless you. And we're getting money. We're almost there to erect a memorial on <coughs> the uh, Legion lawn. Mm -hmm. Right, and not only that, Eileen, you're also going on the honor flight with That's the right. founder, Joe oh, Byron, definitely. over I'm here. looking forward mm -hmm. to that, mm -hmm. definitely. Right. Yeah. I hear there's a comedian on that flight, so that's <laughs> going to even be more interesting. There is? Well, that's what they say. I hope he's funny. <laughs> 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 now we have another special guest who happens to be a Korean vet. We got them all here today. Right. Mm -hmm. Nick Jacoby from Revere. Nick, right. please. Thank you, Morris. Uh, yeah, it's been uh, since 1954 that I was in Korea, and uh, I had just graduated from Boston State College, got my master's degree, and then had to go into the service. And I had a chance to become an officer, but I didn't want to put four years in, so I uh, took a two-year tour to Korea, and uh, it was uh, very interesting. Uh, it was a country that uh, had a lot, but uh, we lived in a tent, and I slept on a cot, and uh, I taught school uh, to the non-offices every day uh, during the week, and then I even had a chance to go to Japan, uh, quite a few other countries, China, uh, when I had uh, some time off. but. Uh, it was very, very interesting living in a country like Korea, uh, and uh, it's something I'll never forget. But I also have uh, six brothers and five sisters, and uh, four of my brothers uh, were also in the service. Uh, three of us were in the Army, one was in the Marines, and one was in the uh, Navy. So uh, uh, we, we gave a lot to the country, and uh, or they especially gave a lot to the country. And we're just so fortunate to have what we have. Mm -hmm. Thank you, yes, Nick. Thank you. Now, our next yeah. guest is a <laughs> Vietnam veteran. And by the way, Bruce Stopson, I want to say thank you for your service because we're going to honor you. We're going to have a telethon on May the 12th, Sunday, right here. And we welcome all the Vietnam veterans to come on up. And if anybody out there wants to make a donation, they're free to do so. Bruce, 
Take it away. Thank you, Mars. <clears throat> I'm Bruce Dobson. I grew up in Revere. Uh, we had went to Immaculate. And we had our 50th high school reunion last year, which was a big deal. But when I graduated in 1962 from Immaculate, I waited until 1963, and I went in the Air Force. And uh, I ended up in 1966, I ended up going to Vietnam. And I was there for a year, and uh, I got out and um, got a job with the phone company. But about 10 years ago, down in Lynn, we started the Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 908. And it's an organization that's strictly Vietnam veterans. And uh, what I'm here for this morning is to remind everybody that the Healing Wall is coming to the Beachmont VFW in Beachmont, and it's going to be June 13th through the 16th. And we'd like everybody to come and honor the Vietnam veterans. There's actually 12 names on the uh, memorial in front of the Legion building. 12 Vietnam veterans from Revere who's, you know, they died too soon. And uh, there's going to be a big ceremony uh, at the wall. Uh, we need more volunteers. Uh, we need more money, so I'm here to try and uh, get more volunteers. And as Morris said, there's going to be that telethon in May, 12th. Uh, 12, May 12th. So if you could be watching then, and uh, you know, hopefully there'll be some more Vietnam veterans that come in, and maybe they can tell their stories. Um, you know, as Korea, or World War II, Vietnam was a deadly, a deadly war. We lost over 58,500 right. veterans. And it's and going women. up. And it's going up. But the, the thing about the Vietnam War is that people don't realize is a lot of the guys came back from that war and they committed suicide. They got involved with drugs. And I'm not saying everybody, but there was a lot of PTSD. Um, so there is down in Washington that you can apply for if one of your family members came back from Vietnam and they died from something involved with that war. In other words, there's presumptive diseases that, um, like myself, I have leukemia from Agent Orange. So if I do die, and I probably will someday, uh, my family can fill out an application and there'll be a, there's a ceremony on Flag Day down in Washington where the names are, are read for the, for the previous year of applications that went in there. So a lot of Vietnam veterans have died after they got home. So if you add those on to the 50, over 58,000 names that are on the wall, it took its toll. And uh, you know, it, as World War II or Korea, we're dying at an alarming rate. Um, every morning when I look at the Boston Globe, I see another name with a flag on it in, on the obituary. And it's sad, you know? I mean, we're going too quick. So just a reminder, uh, June 13th through the 16th, down at the B Beachmont VFW, and I hope everybody from Revere can come and the surrounding communities, and it's going to be a great time, um, and we'll honor the Vietnam veterans that have passed and are still, are still here. So thank you, Morris. Thank you. And just another reminder <coughs> that the telethon will be May the 12th, between 12 and 3, that's on a Sunday, and it'll be right here at the Revere TV studio. Thanks to Mr. Dunbar, who's given us the time. We'll have a telephone number, which we'll give to you. You can call in your donation. I mean, if you're a Vietnam vet, come down. We'll thank you. The Korea vet will thank you. The World War II vets will thank you. And the American people of Revere will thank you. Now I'd like to speak about the honor flag, Joe. Okay. Get back to you, because you made a long trip down from New Hampshire. Would you explain to them, and this gentleman, by the way, Ask for an application, which okay, you tell them sure. how to get one and how to get the people out there. Sure. Any, we are currently taking World War II veterans down to the World War II Memorial. Our priority is our, our World War II because they're our most senior veterans. But we're accepting applications from our Korean veterans. And then we plan on going on to our Vietnam veterans. And speaking of Vietnam veterans and their passing way too quickly, on, uh, on April 7th, we have a flight going out of Portland, Maine, and we have a Vietnam veteran who's terminally ill on that flight. Mm -hmm. And his brother was killed in Vietnam, and his wish is to see the wall. Oh. So we're going to be bringing him on his wish on uh, April 7th from Portland, where, Maine. Uh, where does that person come from, um, if I may ask? He comes from Maine. 
you could tell him if you know who it is, so let him know that the Vietnam War is coming down here, yeah. and he can take his paper and make a rubbing because all the names, may they rest in hmm. peace, will be on that wall, and he could take Absolutely. that back. Absolutely, I'll him. let him know. Yeah. I think one thing, you can't do a rubbing on the moving, on the healing wall. They said you can't? No. Only, you can, if, if there's a name that you want a rubbing from, you can send down to Washington and they'll get it for you. Okay. Hmm. Then you can mention that. Sure. Yep. sure. Thank you. And if you'd like an application, you can obtain our applications at uh, Honor Flight New England at Post Office Box 16287 in Hooksett, New Hampshire, and it's 03106. Or you can give us a call at 603-518-5368. And I think that we've neglected to say that you'll be on our flight also <laughs> yes, on so May 19th. Both of you will yeah. be on our flight. Right. So um, Looking forward to that. Uh, so I just, it's and we have a senior member, Chuck Macon, that is a custodian at our senior in Revere. He will also be on our flight. And I have got a, some sad news. We have a gentleman, his name is Sal Santoro. I thought he'd be here this morning. He's 99 years old. That's the one I mentioned to mm -hmm. you. He was picked on that flight. When I spoke to him over the weekend, he's not feeling that well. I, I hope he can go, but if he can't go and he cancels, then you pick someone else? Somebody else that's on our list. Oh, we'll, I see. We'll pick somebody else on our list. Okay, the next I'll, one available. Right, because, I'll see that he notifies you or someone. Absolutely. In, yep. Wait till at least a couple of weeks before <laughs> the flight. Maybe he'll be feeling better. Okay. And then uh, if he can't, then if he gives us a couple of weeks, and uh, we'll put him back on the top of the list maybe for a future flight. Thank you, Joe. But I got a question I'd like to ask you. Okay. Picture me on the flight, taking off from Logan. Take me through the whole thing. Well, I have to tell you that much of what we do is a surprise to our veterans, so I hate to tell you what okay. we're going to do that day. I can tell you that uh, the day's going to be going by in a heartbeat. We'll be getting on a plane, and then we'll be getting off the plane to come home. <laughs> um, you will, we will eat more on that day that, than you're typically used to. Mm, so, sounds good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, but we'll, we'll, the places that we'll go is um, we're going to go to the World War II Memorial, and then we're going to go to uh, the changing of the guard. They know we're coming. At Arlington? At Arlington. Oh. So we're going to bus up there, and we're going to go to the Vietnam and the Korean memorials, and we're going to go around Washington. And Are gonna we going to see the John F. Kennedy gravesite, too? Uh, we won't. Okay. We won't, because uh, they, we'll, we'll, they'll allow us to bus up, and to see the the, um, the changing of the guard. But we have a pretty tight schedule, so we probably won't see that. Any chance of seeing Mrs. Obama or, and her husband? I, that's a great question. And I have to tell you what happened last October 28th. <laughs> we selected a day, October 28th last year, we selected a day that was not only the Marine Corps Marathon down there, which we didn't know. And then what happened is it was the hurricane. Oh, they predicted the hurricane, so we were torn on whether we were going to go or not, but we ended up going. We hired uh, police details, and one of the p senior park policemen says, I just want to let you know that uh, if we can get, we were just wrapping up at the World War II Memorial, and we were going to the Navy next. She says, um, the president's motorcade's going to be coming by. Oh. And so we ended nice. up at the Navy Memorial when the president's motorcade came by. Oh, how yeah. nice. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, but I can't promise you that's going to happen this time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've got to tell you something that I mean, she, she forgot to mention to you. Tell them about that letter you got from Mrs. Obama's right. secretary. Yes, I'm working to have a memorial for the women veterans of World War II because there is nothing around now to honor them. So we have, as I said before, 146 names of Revere women. And so I wrote to Mrs. Obama and asked her if she cared to contribute or come down and maybe be a guest of honor or something. Mm -hmm. And I got the nicest letter from her, thanking her for inviting her. Uh, sorry that she couldn't come or donate, but she sent me a website where I can get some uh, some ideas, and right. so that was good. Do you have yeah. that letter with you, Eileen? Uh, I have it over there. You want me to go get it? Well, yes, yeah. I'd like you, you to go get it, it and read it, because I'll show it well, to the you people. Got your, you got your microphone. Oh, 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 thank oh, you. Oh, I will all right. You can go on with the show. I'll be right back. <laughs> you are the show, I <laughs> think. <laughs> That's good. Nicky, I got to tell you something. Okay. Nick Jacoby, he does, I mean, he doesn't brag a lot, so I'm going to do the bragging for him. 
He does the farmer's market. He's the I president of the Council of Revere of Elder Affairs. Wow. Yep. <clears throat> Tell them what the yeah. Council of Elder Affairs does, Nick. Oh, my God. They do so <laughs> many things. Uh, number one, there's over 100 people that come to this council, uh, come to the... Uh, center. To the center every day. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, five days a week. And uh, they enjoy every minute of it. And we can give them whatever they ask for. Mm -hmm. And we do. It Here comes the lovely Eileen back with the letter. Show, I'm showing it on TV too, Eileen, so they can keep it as a memento. I mean, we seldom ever get letters from the White House. I mean, <laughs> nice ones. Oh, that's for sure. <laughs> How does this slope control? Yeah, well, you're too anxious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I started something. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, you got oh, it. Good. good. Perfect. Now you see it's authentic. Right. right? Yes. White House, the White House thing. Mm -hmm. Authentic. Wow. So here it is. Read the whole thing today. Uh, sure. It says, uh, Dear Mrs. Marullo, on behalf of Mrs. Obama, I would like to thank you very nice for your thoughtful letter. Um, while we cannot fulfill your request, we wish you the best in your endeavor, and thank you for your uh, inquiry. Um, Americans wishing to, what does that say? Apply. <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Americans wishing to apply for a federal funds are welcome to use the site that she gave us. Please know that Mrs. Obama greatly appreciates your effort and sends you her best wishes. Uh, again, thank you for writing and the, the secretary. So I'll say that. Very good, one. Eileen. Yeah. Yeah. I got to tell Very. you something. When I was a little child, it said that I ran away from home. My mother was looking for me for three days. So she okay. put a picture of me on the milk bottles. She got no results. I told her, I said, well, if you had put it on a whiskey bottle, you would have had no problem. <laughs> 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 uh, oh. Good one. Oh. You like that? <laughs> By the way, who would like to talk about some more of their war experience? How about you, Bruce? You're going to be doing the Vietnam thing. Well, the only thing I did over there, you know, I was in the Air Force. I was on an Air Force base, obviously. And you had the most dangerous time there. Well, in 66, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. But the bottom line is, is that uh, our job was to keep the communications working so the Air Force, so they could get their their flights up in the air to protect the Army and the Marines that were in the field that were on a much more dangerous uh, endeavor. So communications was an important part of the Vietnam War. We had to keep everything working so we could protect the guys out in the field. And uh, i got to tell you, Bruce, what I heard about the Air Force, that you just mentioned the Air Force. Yeah. In Hanoi, just this last week, the past, right. They, the communist government there put out a plane that they had shot down, and they invited some of the Americans to come over there to look at the plane where the, that was deceased, and of course the State Department put up a big thing. So I don't know if you people heard about it. I saw that. I think uh, that was the Amazing Race, and one of the legs on the Amazing Race went through North Vietnam, and there was a B-52 that was a memorial right. to North Vietnam. They were saying how they exploited us and they won the war and all that. And what they did is they had the contestants in the, in the Amazing Race, uh, they had to pick up one of these uh, things they needed for the race, the, the next leg of it. Um, and it showed the Americans and the, at the North Vietnamese uh, Memorial. And then they also had them at a uh, production where the North Vietnamese were singing these songs and the Americans were, they showed them in the audience singing along with the North Vietnamese. And that's almost as bad as the as the Jane Fonda episode I with I was the North Vietnamese. Yeah. With the North Vietnamese, um, I don't think the I don't think the Americans that were in that particular program realized the significance because they were a lot younger than we we are. So I don't think they realized the significance of what they did. Mm -hmm. But I think CBS ought to apologize you to the Vietnam veterans. Yeah, right. I agree with you, you on that. I mean, it would be a simple thing. I mean, it would, it, you know, it, it was just a terrible situation. Um, it, it was all over the news on Fox and CNN. Right. And, 
That's what I, when you mentioned yeah. that, I think yeah, I'd bring yeah. that up. So hopefully CBS will apologize to the Vietnam veterans. Right, and thank uh -huh. you, Bruce, for telling us that there. Mr. Byron, I would like to ask you one question. So you sure. were a police officer for 23 years. I was. Give me your worst scenario that you had to do, um, uh, apprehending somebody. Uh, all I, I, I can say that I was on the SWAT team for nine years. The sharpshooter? Uh, no, the SWAT team. Yeah, what and, did they do uh, exactly? We do drug raids and, and um, hostage situations and stuff like that. And I don't particularly like to talk about my experiences okay. during that time, though. I got to tell you something. When I first got married, we didn't have much. And we wanted to go on a honeymoon. And, and we went to Concord, New Hampshire. And we stayed in a little hotel there. And it was nice, and I love New Hampshire. Matter of fact, my daughter is up there in Franklin, New Hampshire, so it's a beautiful state. It is. I would like to say that. I'd like to go back to Mr. Jacoby. Mm -hmm. The farmer's market that you do every summer, tell us to the people of Revere the hours that you do it, when it's there, what they can get there, and what they should do it there. Okay. It's going to be a lot different this year because, number one, we're going to be moving. We're not down by... Uh, right at the beginning of the beach. We're going to be right across from the police station and the new bridge from Wonderland Station oh. that goes right over to the beach. It's going to be stationed right there. Is that finished already? Uh, that's, um, it's just about finished, but it isn't open. Okay. And we're going to be there on a Thursday, and we used to be there from 12 to 6. They're changing the hours. The hours are now going to be from 3 in the afternoon to seven in the evening. Well, to accommodate the working people. Uh, correct, mm -hmm. correct. And, and Wonderland right there, Station, trains. everything's going to be right there. Plenty of parking, uh, no problem, but, but it will be nice. And there's mm -hmm. going to be at least two uh, farmers markets, uh, two farmers, and then we'll have all kinds of bread. Uh, they, they, they sell just about everything. Jewelry. And a lot of the stuff must come right. from your state, too, by the yeah. way, come down Yes, there. it mm -hmm. does. Yes, oh, it does. But they do, uh, it, they have everything. You, you name it. Coffee, even. Uh, all, all kinds of different types of coffee. Uh, but all kinds of bread, all kinds of uh, jewelry. Uh, you, you name it. They, mm -hmm. they do sell it. Right. Thank but you, Nick. Be nice. Eileen, <laughs> you, after you get your wall for the memorial all set, what are you going to do after you're all done with that? What are your plans in the future? Probably drop dead. <laughs> <laughs> God forbid, Eileen. I mean, 88, me, you still got another 12 let me years? Say, let me say one little thing about um, World War that a lot of people never heard about, the younger generation. When I was working at the, with the amputees at, in Washington, I was young and they were young, and, and it was such a sad thing to see these young, handsome men with no arms, no yeah, legs, or something yeah. like that. So, and, and they'd look forward to letters from their girlfriends or letters from home, anything, to change their mind. So, I may have told this before, but it's interesting. There was a young fellow from Chelsea, and he was a lower leg amputee. And he was working hard because his girlfriend was writing to him, and they were going to get married when he went home. And so we worked hard. One day he got a letter, a Dear John letter. Now, if you never heard of that, you'll hear it now. Dear John, I'm sorry you lost your leg, but now you've lost your girl. That was it. He just went down. He wouldn't do a thing. He wouldn't exercise. He wouldn't practice. He wouldn't. So I got on his back. You come from Chelsea and you're giving up? No way. So I pushed him, pushed him. Finally got well enough, has, had, got his prosthesis, went home. Time went by. I got out of the service. I was having a little snack at my mother's house. The doorbell rang. My father answered it. There's a gentleman to see you. Good. Mm, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I went, and there was this fellow from Chelsea with a huge box of chocolates, a beautiful bouquet, and a hug for me. He went home and married the girl. Mm. Oh, Isn't that's that a nice? very nice story. Yeah. I well, that's a great story. Yeah. Okay, before we wind down, 
Each one take about, let's see, we got about five minutes left. So each one take about 40 seconds and wrap it up and say what you like to, starting with you, Joe. Well, first of all, it's an honor to be with you today. Um, it's going to be a definite honor to be with our World War II vets on the day that we travel. Right. Um, it's very unusual for me to be in this position because I usually spend one day with you and I don't see you again. So it's very, it's an honor for me to be here today. An honor for me to have yeah, you here. Well, thank you. Um, um, and, uh, and I want to invite any World War II veterans that are watching or Korean veterans who are taking the, your applications. Um, it's Honor Flight New England and it's 603-518-5368. Give us a call. Or if you have any questions, give us a call. Or if you know any World War II veterans or you're the family of any World War II veterans, give us a call. We'd love to talk to you about um, getting your loved ones or friends on a flight. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Joe. Eileen, please. And I'd like to uh, invite you to contribute to the memorial that I'm trying to get together for the women. We're almost there. And with your help, we'll definitely get there. Thank you, Eileen. Right. And you, Mr. Jacoby? Well, I have to tell you, I'm married to the same girl for 55 years in wow. June. That's a and happy story. And it happens to be right around the time we're going to be at the VFW, June 16th. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's just such a wonderful thing to remember. I, I'm just so fortunate. Mm -hmm. And Bruce, since you're a Vietnam veteran, you can have an extra second. <laughs> <laughs> Just about the Healing Wall, uh, June 13th through the 16th, down at the VFW in Beachmont. And I just want to say to Eileen that the Vietnam Veterans of America, all Vietnam veterans, and I'm sure all veterans support your cause for oh. the, the women that served, that probably, and they don't get the recognition that they deserve. Yes. And without you, it would have been a lot worse. So thank I, you. I thank you thank for you. your service. Yes. Appreciate it. Right, and I want to thank each and every one of you for coming. Uh, may God bless each and every one of you. May God bless the city of Revere, especially our troops. And may God bless the USA. And thank you all for coming. Until the next time, God bless everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Morris. Thank you, Morris. Thank you, Morris. Thank you, Morris. Thank you, Morris.